No, I'm really excited uh, to get started. Another, another season of football. Feel like um, really, really coming with him with a lot of positive momentum. Uh, you know, I said a lot about that at SEC Media Day. You know, winning three of the last four top 25 recruiting class. Good spring. The way recruiting is going right now, just a, a very, very positive vibe in, in the Manning Center and a lot of really positive momentum right now. So very, very excited about that. Uh, before we open it up for questions, a couple of uh, personnel um, really excited about the signing of Tarikas Tisdale. He's going to be joining us here today. So that, that was a huge get. Um, Noah Jefferson did not qualify, so felt like that was really important. Uh, for Tarikas to come in here at defensive line. And because of that also, we're going to keep Jalen Cunningham at D-line starting the uh, starting fall camp as well. So with that, I'll open it up for questions for you guys. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll bring the microphone to you. Let's start on the shot. During the spring, you had a lot of guys out injured. But what? And I think we got a summer report that most of them are okay now, but What's the official word going into practice? No, everybody, everybody should be back um, healthy with the exception of Devon Penniman. And he, he's a little bit wait and see. He may be in the middle of the season. He had a very severe knee injury. He is running, um, but uh, it's going to be a little bit of a slow process. So we'll know more in the middle of camp. I'll be able to give you a little bit better feel when he starts cutting and moving. But everybody else should be ready to go. Got a lot of people coming back, obviously, that missed the spring. So excited about that. Uh, Matt, in, in light of the news out of Columbus yesterday and, and today, is that something that you and coaches like you around the country kind of have to readdress with your players, your staff, that kind of thing as you get started on another season? Yeah, I, I think you always are, are evaluating and seeing what you can do better and always try to learn as much as you can from other, other situations. Um, you know, you can't cop, don't know enough to comment on what's going on there, but you always try to look at everything that's going on and try to find ways to evaluate yourself and be better. Matt, the defense has obviously kind of struggled for the most of the past two years. Why, why do you think this is going to be different this year? What, what has to change? Well, you know, I think, I think the biggest thing is to improve. I, you know, I'm, and, I, and I said it at media day that let, let's, let's build on that second half of A&M where they, you know, they, got, they shut out in the second half and getting five turnovers in the Egg Bowl. Let's really build on that. I think, I think continuity is huge, being in the second year of the same system, everybody being one year better. And uh, I think – you know, having a uh, experienced secondary and being able to load the box some should help us. And, uh, you know, we just got to find a way to continue to build and get better in, in our second year. Last year you were kind of thrust into this situation and is a whirlwind. Now that you've had a chance to settle in, to be in the head coach, had a year under your belt, what's the pros and cons of what, you know, What's been hard? What's been easy? Um, you know, I, when, I, when I got this job this time last year, I really didn't pro approach it as the interim. I, you know, I, you know, I, I kind of took the mindset I'm making decisions for the long term, what's best for the program. And I, so that, that's the way I approached it. But um, I think what I'll be better at is just being much more efficient with my time, knowing where to allocate time offensively, defensively, recruiting. I just think the only way you can do that is through experience, and uh, you know I'll, I'll be one year better at that. But but time management for sure uh, would be what I'd say. Coach, what do you look forward to see from the wide receiving core this year? No, yeah, the you know the wide receiving core. They're one of the most talented in the country. They're very 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 um, talented, unselfish, and uh, they work really really hard. They're very driven. They push each other. Um, to be better, and that, that's what I like about those guys. You know they all want the ball every snap, but it's fun to see when one of them catches a touchdown, the other two chasing after them and then pushing each other to be better. So I think that's a unique um, blend of guys that have that swagger, but they're also pull for each other. I think that's unique. Coach, you mentioned recruiting three or four times uh, so far. Your role has obviously changed from an assistant to a head coach. How has it changed? You know what, I, I just, it just um, same thing with your team. You go from being really in one area to doing it all. And, but, but that's the part I enjoy. I enjoy the relationship part of coaching. That's, to me, that's what I'm good at and that's what I enjoy doing. And you just, you, it's just a much more broader uh, scope and getting to know more people. Instead of just focusing on three or four, you're more worried about the big picture. But, 
but it's all about building relationships, and that, that's the part I like. Matt, you've been associated not only with this program but other programs and gone through several camps, if you will. What are some keys to getting to the end of camp and feeling like, okay, we're ready for the season? You know what, I think it's always tough because every team's different, but, to, but you really want to see your team go out and compete. Uh, you know, it used to be I was just happy if the offense did as good. Now I'm going to be not happy regardless of what happens. But it, it's, uh, it's just you want to see your guys compete. You want to see the offense win a day, defense win a day, and you just want to see guys compete. And when you, see, when you see that competitive character start showing up in your team, that's when you start feeling like, okay, these guys are ready to play. Matt, a big part of football is leadership. And usually you think about older guys as your leaders. You, you want to talk about some of those guys? Yeah, you know what, I'm, I, I was uh, – and I'm going to talk about defense first. Josiah Coatney really at the end of the year really came into his own as a leader. Uh, I don't know if you all heard him speak at SEC Media Day, but just a um, very, very well spoke. He's a guy, if he says something, the guys in the locker room listen. But that, that whole secondary, Ken Webster, I mean, he, he's a senior. He's been around Zedrick Woods, C.J. Moore. Th those guys are stepping up and becoming more vocal as they grow in confidence. So I, so I really like that. Um, your quarterback has to be a leader, and it's good that Jordan had, you know, his, him having success really helped him be a leader, you know, because guys aren't going to follow a guy that's not, not doing great, you know. So I think him having success really helped him be a leader. But we got a lot of good players up front that are leaders. Sean Rawlings is a phenomenal leader. Jordan Sims, Javon Patterson, Greg Little, Alex Givens, they all, you know, kind of take ownership. And then, then you throw in that receiving core, Dawson Knox. So it's a, it's a, it's a really good group um, and a core group of leaders that I feel good about. Coming out of spring, what, what were your areas of concern that you really have to attack in August? You know what, we're just having so many uh, injuries in the D-line, you know, because yeah, with, with, you want to see what Kadir can do and, and, and Austrian and those guys. And then that, 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 that was something for me because of the injuries. I, you didn't really get a great picture. So I, I think I'll see a little bit better that, you know, scrimmage one, scrimmage two this fall camp. And then I think the biggest question is linebackers. Which, which guy is going to step up? Which one of the young freshmen is going to step up? How are Momo and Josh Clark going to be in fall camp? You know, because I, I think all those guys are talented, but they got to show that they can do it. So that's, you know, probably the, the front seven. I think everybody knows that. But that's, that's what I want to see. I want to see the guys that are coming back healthy. How are they doing? And then which one of the linebackers is going to step up? Matt, how many of the young offensive linemen do you think are ready to play and, and take on a different role? Um, the one that jumps out in my mind is, is Ben Brown. I think uh, he'll compete at right guard with Jordan Sims. He's a talented kid. Uh, Royce Newman is very, very talented. He's going to play some. Bryce Matthews can do a bunch of different things. So uh, th those guys will play. You know, it's but, – but Ben Brown, Royce Newman, Bryce Matthews, those guys can – I think will have a chance to contribute. His, uh, his just overall athletic ability. I mean, he's a big, strong, physical guy. He's smart. He's a good athlete. Uh, he plays hard. He's just – he's what – when you say offensive lineman, that's what, that's what he looks like. And he's going to – I'm glad we are able to redshirt him and he's got four years left. He's going to have a bright future. Uh, but Jordan does have a lot of experience and uh, he can do a lot of different things for us. He'll be playing at guard and doing some backup center stuff for us as well. Coach, uh, with the NCAA investigation finally coming to an end, how does it feel just to be able to get back to the game of football? Good. Uh, just, just excited to get started. And like I said, all, taking all the positive momentum at the end of last season and top 25 recruiting class and the way things are going now, just taking all the positive momentum and focusing on football and focusing on the guys in this locker room and trying to block out all the outside noise. I think that's the, uh, that's the most exciting part about moving forward. And Coach, on that note, obviously the upperclassmen didn't sign up for a two-year bowl ban at the end of their tenure. What does it mean to you for these guys to stick around and, and be leaders in this program? Uh, you know, I, you can't say enough about the guys that, that sit in this room. They, they, uh, when, when you go through a tough time, it, it does one of two things. It pushes you apart or it pulls you together. And the guys that have been through it and stuck together, they, they really, really have bonded and they, they play for each other. So we just want to continue that culture. And, and take it the next step this year with it. Any more questions up top? How about down there? Any more questions? Matt, obviously, 
you know, you're still at the tail end of it, but there is a little bit of the NCAA appeal process still going on. How do you approach that with your players? Do you allow them to get their hopes up, or do you even talk about it? I mean, well, I, I, you know, I think that they, I mean, they already know the penalty, so I think we, we, we prepare for the worst, and if something else happens, then it's a bonus. So that, that's the way that uh, we've always approached it, is, hey, we're just going to keep our head down and keep working. We're going to play for each other, and then if something else happens, then it's a bonus. Matt? You guys have talked a lot about a change of culture, but what does that actually look like? And that what showed you that it had taken hold? You know what? I just I just think that game in, game out last season, you started to uh, everybody's like, okay, this team's going to quit, and they didn't. Okay, this team's going to quit, and they didn't. They just kept showing up, and they kept battling, and they kept competing. That's when you started to see the culture change. Uh, for go from a you know unselfish blue collar tough football team at the end of the season. And then you just want to take that and you want to build on it. And you see guys pushing each other and you, you get the feel of guys working extra and do, doing all the little things that it takes to be a special football team. It's just a feel that you get around here. And you just want to take it from where we were and just keep building on it. Uh, without Wilkins, without Penniman, how would you come out of spring in the run game in your mind? Well, I, I mean, the, the it was kind of a, a two-headed monster force in the springs. We knew we had to replace Jordan Wilkins, but we also wanted to work on stopping the run. So we spent a lot of time on that in the spring. And because of that, you know, Eric Sweeney got a bunch of reps. Scotty Phillips got a bunch of reps. Isaiah Woolard, Armani Linton. So, you know, I, I was, uh, I guess, cautiously optimistic about that running back room just because they still got to go out there and do it. <clears throat> Excuse me, but they were – they showed some flashes and being really, really good, and maybe you know, top to bottom, maybe even a little bit deeper than last year. So you know, excited about that, but they still got to go do it. Coach, when you're trying to change the culture, blue collar mentality, like you're talking about, does it kind of play in your favor being that underdog role, the the, the forgotten man out of the group? You know what? I, I just think. Um, yeah, you know, but the, the players are the ones that set the mentality. So they're, they're the ones that have to buy in. But, but I think uh, they do take on a little bit of the persona of the coach. And I think that that's important to, to create that because there are no shortcuts. And everybody with social media, everybody wants things right now. But if you want to get things done, you got to go to work. There are no shortcuts. And that, that's what you have to do if you want to be really good is you got to roll your sleeves up and you got to go to work. And that's, that's really what fall camp is about. We've been doing a lot of talking with the SEC media day. but but now it's time to put the pads on and go to work. 